Hello everyone, welcome to Radically Loved Radio. I wanted to create a place where people can go to to get inspired, get motivated, or find some clarity and get tools to create a radically loved life. I will do my best to provide information on a variety of subjects, including yoga, holistic health, life coaching, spirituality, meditation, and overall mindful living. Each episode will bring you some of the world's best spiritual leaders, entrepreneurs, yoga teachers, coaches, along with some of my closest friends, and we will talk about their life experiences and journeys to create something more out of their lives and how they continue to grow to make that happen. Hey guys, Rosie here. I just want to say I am so grateful that you're listening. We are just getting a massive amount of response on this podcast, and I am so grateful that you're a part of this radically loved community, that you're enjoying the content and that you're enjoying all the guests and that you're still here and you're still working on yourself and your journey and your path. And I pray that you've received some tools listening to the guests or listening to any of my ideas or topics on meditation or yoga and how these tools can help you create a life of purpose to continue to help us give you the best content, you can subscribe to this podcast. And most of the time you can just do it from your phone, from iTunes, click subscribe and write a review. This really helps us continue this path and this journey. And we love doing it so much. And again, I'm so grateful that you're here. Let us know what you thought. Thanks for listening. Okay. Now that's me. That's a cue for me to answer the question, right? Okay. okay, okay. (laughs) So my name is Dinah Trout. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Health Aid Kombucha. We are currently the fastest growing kombucha brand in the market. And kombucha is one of the fastest growing categories um, in the, in the grocery store actually. So it's a pretty exciting place to be. We started five short years ago in the farmer's market. Uh, with about 600 bucks and no idea what we're doing. P.S. We still don't know what we're doing. Um, yeah. And so we've got, um, you know, all kinds of stories we can talk about. We can talk about the kombucha. We can talk about, you know, the personal journey um, of going from having no idea to running a business with over 100 employees. And you're like, um, it's still having no investors idea. Investors and all kidding. that stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, it's still having exactly. no idea. Um, I, I am so curious, uh, to talk to you. Uh, I mean, obviously it's like, I'm always fascinated by stories that, uh, that start with, you know, you have a big dream and you kind of have little resources and then you have to be resourceful, you know, like I'm, I, I come from that school of thought and, and that's Uh sort of part of why I love uh, bringing people on that have that similar story because I, I, there's definitely some tenacity that comes with creating a big vision like the one that you did. So um, for the people listening, I'm a huge fan. Health Aid is like one of my favorite, uh, if not the only kombucha that I really drink. And so having uh, Dinah on here is, is just is a super uh, huge honor and, I, and I'm so excited uh, for that. Thank you. But um, thank you. If you can just like kind of tell us a little bit about how this all came to be, like, what were you doing before sure. this, this came about? And what inspired you to create this, this brand? Yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool story. So I'm glad you asked. Um, all right. So before I begin, like, I don't want to start at the way beginning, you know, because we could start with the, we could start with the dinosaurs and how they inspired <laughs> me. But no, let's fast forward a little bit. Um, uh, my background is in nutrition and in graduate school, I fell in love with food and not just making it, not just learning about it, but also healing with it. So it was in graduate school that I, I, I gained, I, I sort of honed in on my philosophy that health has so much more to do with, you know, your personal happiness than it does with science. And it was really there that I got into fermented foods, learned, learned how to make kombucha, learned about the power of fermented foods. Like I would give it to my clients as a nutritionist and it worked better than anything else, like drugs even. Um, 
on people's bellies when they were, you know, not, not well. So, um, I kind of just knew all that in the background, but I had no idea that I was going to start a business and that I was going to start a kombucha business at that time. So I'm just kind of giving you the background, but I did learn how to make kombucha a long time ago when I was in grad school. And that was that fast forward. Then I moved to Los Angeles with my boyfriend. I'm working for a corp, like a corporate America. I've got a job. I'm moving up the ladder. I'm, I'm doing pretty well, but like there's a hundred thousand employees. So <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like tier tier Y instead of tier Z, you know? Right. And I really, um, in, in those, those five years, years, though I learned a lot about myself as you do in a job, I was feeling more and more unfulfilled. And by that fifth year, uh, five years out of grad school, just, just, there was a voice within that was so loud and it was, it wasn't even clear. Like, it wasn't like, Dinah, you will start a kombucha company, you know, like a voice of God or something. It was nothing like that. It was just a feeling. It was a strong feeling of knowing there was something else out there for me and that I, I had to go explore this voice. So, uh, naturally when you have this kind of, you know, voice that you're listening to, you talk to your friends about it. Right. And I talked to my best friend and my boyfriend about it and they surprisingly were feeling the same way in their own respective careers. And, you know, we're just like, Hey, this is it. Like, we don't have kids yet. We don't have much to lose. We only got 600 bucks each. Let's, <laughs> let's see if we can do something with this. And so we started an entrepreneur club and we met every week. We invited all of our friends who we thought were smart <laughs> and nobody showed up oh, except no. the three of us. <laughs> yeah. Now they're all regretful about that. I'm like, see, you could have started this with us. <laughs> So, and we would just meet and discuss what this big and cheap idea could be. Um, and basically, I mean, the story is kind of a funny one, but I think there's an important lesson in it for other entrepreneurs that we, we initially thought we were going to start a hair loss prevention company huh. because Justin, my boyfriend, actually at the time now with my husband was kind of losing his hair, you know, just like natural male baldness. And he was really upset about it. And he was like, I want to find a natural solution to this. I was passionate about natural solutions because my whole background and food, like my passion about food and holistic wellness was still very much present. So we started researching what would regrow hair. And we found that in parts of the world, they use the culture that is both an ingredient in making kombucha and also a byproduct of making kombucha. It's like it's, it's called a SCOBY. You've probably seen pictures of it. Yeah. But this culture is used in parts of the world as like a mask and they put it on the head, uh, to regrow hair. It's like a, you know, like, you know, you do it once a week or something and it's supposed to like increase the integrity of the cells and like help kind of draw blood flow there or something who knows about the, the mechanism, but they were using it and saying it was working. And I was, I said to the group, Hey, I know how to make scobies cause I know how to make kombucha. Right. I've been making my whole life. In fact, we would drink my kombucha in our, entrepreneur club meetings and, and think about the idea. So it's kind of funny. It was always in front of our noses. We just didn't know it. Yeah. Um, so I start making kombucha. I start making a ton of kombucha, um, not for the liquid, but instead to actually cultivate these little cultures. And I was putting them aside and like gathering them until I had enough to do something with. And we were going to use Justin as our guinea pig. <laughs> um, but soon enough, like, you know, so you have to brew a batch of kombucha to make a scoby. So I'm making a ton of kombucha and I have so much kombucha. Like soon I have like 60 cases of kombucha in just a couple of weeks because I was making it every night. And, um, I didn't like, it was taking over my tiny apartment. So I started giving it away. We started giving it to our friends, neighbors, anybody walking down the street. And this was where kind of, we pivoted because everybody came back to us saying, oh my gosh, this kombucha is the best kombucha we've ever had. Like, this is way better than it's on the shop. Like, this is kind of just consistently what we kept hearing. People started coming back for more. People started giving us money for it. And over, like, a, just a two-month period, um, we were actually making some money, literally just giving them unlabeled, you know. And in here, we thought we were the smart ones because we're, like, you know, gathering these scobies. Yeah. Like, we, have the re we have the real business right here. <laughs> um, anyway, then, then an opportunity came up in – like in the first couple months of this where Vanessa's friend who runs a farmer's market reached out to her and said, Hey, I've got an opening for the summer 
in Brentwood Farmer's Market if you want to sell your hair stuff there. And we hadn't yet figured out the hair thing yet. We were still <laughs> cultivating scobies and like figuring out that. Right. So we were like, well, we don't have scoby. We don't have the hair thing ready yet, but we do have like 600 cases of kombucha. Right. So let's just, and we were like, let's just spend the summer selling kombucha. We're going to call it healthy. We came up with the name, the label, everything in like a weekend. And we were like, let's sell it in the farmer's market for the summer. And then we'll take that money and put it toward the hair loss business. And of course, as you know, uh, we never ended up doing anything with the hair loss business because right. the kombucha business was such an incredible uh, ride. Like, I mean, from day one at the farmer's market, it was just on fire and it has not stopped. Oh, that's so great. So for the people listening that, that don't aren't in the know, that for some reason, you know, don't don't know what kombucha is. Just can you give us an overview of what it is, how you make yes. it, you know, because you're talking about scobies and, you know, I, I'm fully aware of how kombucha is made. I've tried to make it one time and I realized that I like to purchase made kim- kombucha as opposed to trying to make <laughs> it myself. It was so hard. It just was, I just was not in the right headspace. But anyway, for the people listening. It is, it's a labor of love. It's please a labor of love. tell us. Um, sure. So kombucha is fermented tea, and it's naturally rich in probiotics and healthy organic acids. It's been around for thousands of years, used in countless cultures, um, to generally as a drink that promotes health. Um, and that and it and, and I and it would promote health because it's it's chock full of the, of these good things like probiotics and organic acids. And if you have friends that take shots of organic uh, apple cider vinegar or something like that, it would be a very similar type of product to that, except I think it tastes better. Um, in the end, it's a little bit fizzy. Uh, it's got, it's not as, it's not nearly as sweet as soda. It's not very sweet at all. It's a little vinegary and it's a refreshing drink. And what I like to tell people is it just kind of makes you feel good. It's a, it's a nice, um, it's a nice sort of alternative to water. And I look at it as a food, not a drug or anything like that. So it's, it's kind of a, I use it. I I usually drink it at three o'clock when I feel like having a cupcake and, oh. <laughs> instead, you know, or a cup of coffee and I have a kombucha and it just kind of gets me, it gets me through the rest of the day. Yeah. The way, the way you make it is you brew tea, you add this culture. The culture is similar to what's used in any fermented food, like real kefir or real yogurt. Um, and over time that culture, it house it houses all the probiotics. So over time, that culture eats the sugar and in exchange makes these acids. And so the liquid bec- goes from sweet tea to a fermented tea, which tastes really nothing like tea in the end. Yeah. Um, it's kind of more like a vinegar, like a vinegary sparkling drink. Yeah. I mean, to me, I just love having it as a treat. Like it's it's usually like, you know, Tor- Tori and I, Tori's my, my boyfriend, like, we're, I mean, we get it. Like that's, that's what we have in our, in our refrigerator. Yeah. Like that's like our, our beverage of choice. And we'll be like, do you want to, do you want a kombucha, a kombucha tree? And I'm like, bring me my pink lady. And for those of you that don't know, it's a, uh, it's one of my favorite flavors of health aid pink lady. Oh, that's awesome. Well, that's our number one flavor. So you're not alone. Oh goodness. Look at that. Uh, so anyway, yeah, like I totally agree. <laughs> I, I, it definitely is, uh, one of my favorite, uh, uh, treats Thank to you have. for that. So That's very sweet. Thank you. And again, like those people listening, the people that know me, they know that this is like my jam. So, and, and for all the reasons that you said, not only the health benefits, but just the, the, the feeling of it. And it's like, I, I feel so much better being able to have a treat that I feel like uh, is a, is a, is a food, you know, would you, be, yeah. would you say that uh, it's a super food? Um, so for me, I don't really believe in those kinds of terms because I think all things that are natural and all things that come from the ground are, are super. Um, but I do think that fermented foods hold additional power, um, or, or important power. I should say, I shouldn't make, I'm not saying it's superior to like a blueberry or something, but, um, in general, when you eat fermented foods, you are replenishing your body with these you know, probiotics and acids that it really depends on. And we do a really good job in today's society of killing off our probiotics in the gut because we drink, you know, super clean and uh, sterilized water and sterilized food and everything we're eating is dead. So the only way for us to replenish these 
these, you know, this flora is to ingest it. And I'm a big believer in whole foods and real foods. Yeah. So like, I think it's best to eat those and drink those instead of like pop a pill. Yeah. Um, and so kombucha is one example of a fermented food. Um, that's really easy to access and really easy to drink and, um, and can, and, and I think that's why it makes you feel good. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's not like a miracle cure-all. It's just, you know, something you should incorporate in your diet. So yeah, I guess in a way it is a superfood. But See? So, so <laughs> we just a, don't want to call it a superfood. I get it. So would a blueberry and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll take it. Uh, okay. what has been, what has been the, the biggest obstacle for you in creating this this business like that that we can kind mm. of draw from and and learn from is there is there any yeah oh you know it's such a it's a it's a very simple question it should be simple to answer but there are so many angles but the first thing that came to mind when you said that is uh, you know the biggest and this is something I think we can all draw on because I mean I think most people can relate um the biggest hurdle or difficulty has been getting out of your own way. Like really stepping into, I mean, each year that we grow as a business, it is required a new and better, a newer version and a better version of me. It has required me stepping into even further, the leader I know I can be even further, the, um, strategist, I know I can be even further into whatever it is I'm going after. And what's crazy is you're, you kind of feel like a little bit of an athlete. Like you just gave your best shot at 2017 and guess what you have to do in 2018? <laughs> do better. You got to do better. Right. So it's, it must be how an Olympian or an athlete feels that they're always constantly trying to beat their best and their best was their absolute best. So, um, it's like a constant kind of like uh, drive to um, get better. And I think what I've learned with each phase of improvement um, is that a lot of the improvement really, it's not so much developing skills. I mean, in a lot of, a lot of times it is, but those are the easy ones. You can read a book and learn about a skill. Yeah. The hard ones, the hard ones are putting those pieces of those, those baggage, those pieces of baggage down that, that, that for whatever reason you carry with you, you know, the fears, the, the doubts, the lack of confidence, the, the shoulds, the should nots, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, learning to put those down and the freedom you experience when you do put those down. It, it's like, every time I do that, I'm like, why did I carry that for 25 years? You know, like why it, it never served me then. And certainly not going to serve me now because I'm letting it go. But um, th that's been the biggest, that's been the biggest hurdle. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, so what, what kind of practice do you have? I mean, it sounds like you've done uh, a lot of work on, on your own personal, uh, self and, and even self-development and understanding, because I, I believe that to be an effective leader as, as you, you've proven to be, and, and I know that it's really important for you to create a, a community oriented culture in, in your business. How, Absolutely. how have you been able to develop that within yourself? Like, is there a ritual you have? Is there a practice that you have? Like, how do you continue to work on yourself? So that's a really good question. And I'll just start by saying the, you know, the reason I, um, yeah, I don't know who said this actually now that I'm thinking about it, but someone once told me you cannot go professionally where you first do not go personally. Oh. And it always stuck with me. Um, and it is absolutely proven to be true. So I think the concept that you separate your personal or your, you know, your personal development from your business development is like, it's not accurate. The, the better you get at communicating, the better you're going to be in your personal life the better you're going to be in your professional life. Right. So, okay. So first and foremost, kind of accepting that this is a, a life work. It applies to all your relationships. Um, and you know, is an important thing. So what are the practices? Okay. A couple things. First, one of the major things I have is an executive coach. I think this is major for me because I, and I've had her from like year two onward. Oh, um, preach sister. I, <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, this, this basically is a relationship I've developed with someone I found 
um, connected with, really just admired, strong woman, led companies in the past herself before, but she was a bit of like a good mix for me. She was like, you know, 20% spiritual, 50% business, you know, 20% marriage counselor, like, oh, it's exactly what I needed. I call her, I call her my work therapist, but I talk to her every two weeks and she helps me through what I'm going through. And for me, it's been hugely important because she catches the words I choose. She, you know, catches my energy. She, and she kind of helps me through it. Of course, I'm the one that does the work, but it's helpful to have that space with someone where you just talk about the soft stuff and they help you figure that out and they help you also identify like blind spots and stuff. So I think from a growth and leadership perspective, having, um, like a, a person that can help you through that is, is clutch. So yeah. some kind of executive coach and some people are good about mentors and like getting this for mentors. I think that works for me. I didn't, I'm not that great at like the mentor thing. Like I always wanted to have like a ton of mentors, but I just, I get really busy. I have my head down. I kind of forget to, ke- to connect and keep in touch with them. And so for me, it worked better to pay somebody every two weeks, an hour on the phone. Like that worked for me. Oh, okay. So that's, that's one really important tool. Um, the second is the hustle. Um, and this applies not just to the leadership part and the growth part, but it also applies to the work part. Like running a successful business is really just a succession of getting back on the horse every time you fall. Like, so it, it's just as simple as getting back up and, and, and doing it again. Like you, you, you know, life is a game. You get knocked down, you stand back up. Um, the difference between businesses that fail and succeed is literally that one chooses to just continue to lay down. I really believe that. Yeah. Agreed. So in this, so in the same way, so like there are so many times when our business shouldn't have succeeded. Like it should, you know, could have, I should say it could have not succeeded. Like it could have stopped. It could have flailed. We could have been like, you know what? We have no more money. We're out. Our Amex just shut us down. Public health department just shut us down. All these things have happened to us. You know, we got evicted from my apartment because we weren't supposed to be brewing, you know, kombucha in there, obviously, (laughs) you know, living in my car so many times, so many times. But you, you, the three of us just always were like, no, we are hustling through this. We are getting back on it. We are not giving up. And when you get back on, it's like, you just, you just keep going. I don't know what to say. It just keeps going and you figure it out. So in the same way with the personal development stuff, it's no different. Like when I recognize that I'm in a time of doubt, insecurity, uncertainty, loneliness, you know, those feelings we all have that overcome us. And we are like unsure of ourselves, unsure of what to do. Um, in the beginning, by the way, I still have those feelings all the time. All the <laughs> that was going to be my next question. We carry all on. The time. <laughs> The difference now versus then is then they were very, I didn't know, I didn't have, like, I didn't know what to do with them. Now, when I see those feelings around me, um, I can recognize them, identify it, and I'm like, okay, and I can call it something. And I'm always like, all right, Dinah, you're just going through another transformation. You are, you are in an uncomfortable space because you are going through a stage of growth. That's why you have these feelings. You always have these feelings at this time. So, uh, and, and what I've learned to do over time is become more confident that on the other side of this is a stronger me and I just have to get there and that's okay. Like, be, you know, so the, the, the hustle piece is getting there, you know, you gotta, you gotta recognize this uncertainty, this pain, this darkness you feel it is a part of the price you pay for getting stronger. Um, every person that's strong that you talk to will tell you about that dark place they had to come from to get there. And, um, and it's probably not just one time. So. Wow. Uh, that's so great. You just got deep. Right? I know. I'm like, this is how I like it. That's what I'm talking about. I'm like, this is, that's, that's right. That's exactly what we need to do. My question to that was going to be like, that that really denotes a, a certain amount of tenacity and, and dedication and discipline within you. If there's one person that you had to attribute those qualities uh, within yourself to, who would that person in your life be? Uh, 100% my father. 
tell us about him. He sounds one hundred percent my father. Yeah, you know, and he was the one that made me cry when I was young. Isn't that funny? <laughs> you know, so my dad had four daughters and very hardworking, successful business guy. Um, also very committed to family, um, but like you know, worked a lot and was, you know, always very hard on me. Um, I think he knew. Um, or at least I felt he was always hard on me. You know, that was the sort of amalgamation I had created. Um, but, you know, like, uh, you know, when I would go to him and be all proud of a, about a paper I wrote in, you know, grade eight or whatever, and I'd be like, hey, dad, read this awesome paper I wrote. Isn't it so good? And what I really wanted was like, you know, three gold stars for Dinah. He would like sit down with me in the library with his like, you know, glass of schnapps and... <laughs> literally just like at the end I would walk away and my paper would be like um braille like it like you could feel the indentations because he had written so much I mean there was not one word in that paper that was the same he was every sentence could be said better every uh word there was a better word there was a you know and it was that's just an example of how I would leave and be like great I came in for a good job high five girl and I got, I came out with like, oh my gosh, I have like six more hours of this paper to do. <laughs> and like, but the crazy thing is that's what's made, that's what's made me a good writer. Yeah. And that's what made me realize that you just kind of can keep getting better and that you're not, no matter how good you think you are, you, there's more there. You know, there's more to grow there. He always taught me that. Oh, and, um, God. yeah, he was always the guy that like, he would, he would definitely congratulate you when you, like, you know, scored a goal or something like that in soccer or, or got an A. But it was never enough. Like, you always had to – it was always – you're always kind of chasing the next best thing. Yeah. Um, and I hated that as a kid, of course. I used to always hate that. But now I really look at him and thank him because I don't think I would have had this work ethic. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, Vanessa, my partner – has, has a very similar father and they, um, anyway, she would say the same thing. Oh, that's, that's, you know, I always find that it's so funny how, you know, we get those, those, we, we, those are the, the, the influential people in our lives that really sort of instill that ethic or, or really embed that that motivation or the drive, you know, and I, I always find it so fascinating to ask successful entrepreneurs like yourself. And I'm sure that your partner, she probably has a similar, you know, like you said, similar story. I just, I find it so, uh, so fascinating to be able to have that. Not to say that if you didn't have somebody like, like Dinah's father to, to do that, that you wouldn't, but it's just like, I find it that, that it definitely adds that element of like, okay, like, just dust yourself off and you continue to move forward and continue to go, you know? Yeah. My mom yeah. was the same way. Like my mother was uh, very much that person. Like I would come home and I'd be like, Oh, I got an A in my, on my science project today. And she's like, okay, like that. And I'm like, well, why are <laughs> like, what, how come you're not? What? What's Where's happening? That? And she's like, well, that's, that's, how it's supposed to be like why would I celebrate something that's supposed to be part of what you do and I'm just like are <laughs> you know? yeah like, yeah but, but it helped kind of diminish the 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 uh I mean I still of course wanted to be validated and glorified and, and my father took care of that and I'm like I got a d on my Spanish exam and he'd be like oh this is so great <laughs> Oh, yeah, he's like, it's not an F. Good yeah. job. He's like, so you passed. Like, that's the positive way of looking at it. You know, he was always that person. But, you know, it was it's nice to kind of have the balance with, with my mom being like, no, you gotta you gotta work hard. I mean, that's just part of what you do. So totally. So I can totally. recognize that and I love that. What do you what do you do personally? I mean, like this is so I mean, I think that your business and just like what you do and, and obviously a, as a, the type of person that you are, I mean, you seem very uh, driven and very sort of positive in, in your approach of, of how you're wanting to continue to create more. And I can I can feel that your vision is so much bigger even than what you've already created. 
which is really inspiring. What what do you do when you when you find that maybe you have a lack of inspiration or, or do you ever have moments where you, you feel a little like like you're lacking that that drive for uh, for inspiration? Yes. Yes, of course I do. Of course I have that moments because I'm human. <laughs> And I think, yeah, so like, it's not just, you're right. It's not just about the doubt in yourself. It's also about the, what about when you have crappy days? And let me tell you, it's really hard when you're having, and usually they're not crappy days. They're like crappy weeks, right? Or like, you know, it's a lot happening for a a good period of time because we can all handle a day. It's supposed to get to us when it's like, you know, your kid's not sleeping and, you know, shit's hitting the fan at work and, you're getting a cold and you got your period, like all this stuff at once. Um, (laughs) right. So those weeks. Yeah. And then how about like when you've got 107 employees that are coming in for like the annual company meeting and you're supposed to get up for three hours and inspire them. Like that's hard, right. When you're having those weeks and you're like, how am I supposed to inspire them? I can't even get myself out of bed. Um, yeah, but you got to do it. Right. And so how do you do that is the question. It is really tough. And I still struggle with that because the reality of running a business is there is still so much personal, personal growth in this. It's, it's, it's a very complex thing. You know, it's probably a lot like parenting a teenager, which I have yet to experience, but, um, you know, it's just, so, so you, 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 you apply whatever you can to do it. And I mean, so there's a, there's a little bit of fake it till you make it right. There's a little bit of like, I know, like, I know I gotta be inspiring. I know I gotta be positive. Like I'm gonna just, that's like, I'm forcing that there's like 10% of that. And then definitely that's when I get on an emergency call with my coach and I'm like, (laughs) girl, I need you to help me. I am feeling really uninspired. And, or, and if you don't have a coach, a friend, someone who really knows you yeah. and, um, can help you help remind you what it is that, um, that you're passionate and happy about. Yeah. But the most, the most important thing I think beyond those two things, absolutely. Is you need to take a break. You need, I, I, I need to take a break. I find I need a very simple, even if it's a half day. But a half day away from it all, I usually go to the Korean spa. Oh, yeah. And somehow I come out of that and I'm like, you know what? I'm better. So it's like, I think it's, a, it's it, what we have to do is understand that the, the signs are there, that we're overworked, we're overtired, our brain is fried, we're, you know, something. And what you actually need is just a bit of a pause. And we, we, we get so kind of stuffed in our work, like our heads are so in the sand and, and down and we're like working, 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 working. We don't have time. We're so busy. We don't even have time to say we're busy. Yeah. You know, it's like that. And, and that's a very um, dangerous place to be because if you don't, if you don't take that time, you will never get out of that cycle. And so oddly enough, like if I were to pinpoint the major milestones that have happened at health aid, like, in terms of strategy, like the major big strat- strategic ones. Yeah. Do you know the ideas for them happened when I was fucking sitting on an airplane every time? <laughs> Which means something to me. It means that white space of time is so important, you know? Yeah. I remember the trip to Australia, me and my husband, we were on the flight together, and that was where we came up with, like, our whole sales plan. And, like, you know... So that don't think that that time where you rest and that time that you take away is at all poorly spent or means you're not a hard enough worker or anything like that. Like if you're feeling stressed and strained, the number one thing you got to do is take a break. Oh, that's so true. I mean, look, I, I, this is part of my, my world, you know, with teaching yoga and, and meditation and, and doing coaching and all these things. I mean, it's so much a part of what I'm always, uh, you know, suggesting people do. And sometimes I forget to do it myself. You know, I find myself in that same sort of, uh, 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 spiral that I'm like, Oh, I'm like feeling like I don't have time to respond to this person 
because I'm too busy doing something, you know, and it's like, okay, just give mm-hmm. yourself a beat, take a moment and, and just, you know, give yourself that, that space. So I, I, I love that you're saying that. And I love that you're able to recognize when those moments are for you and that it's, that it's important that we, we take the time. Is yeah. There, what, what are some, is there any, if they are, I want you to share them. Is there any like words of wisdom you live by? Or is there some sort of like rhetoric that you're like, this is the way that I live my life? some mantra that you may say to yourself? Um, There are a few. Um, The one thing I just want to say, just to finish out that last combo, just because I don't want to come off as like perfect. I will just say, I also, (laughs) I, I also have problems with it too, Rosie. And like, it's a constant struggle. So I just want us all to know that like, I haven't like cracked the code. I just, Somehow, sometimes, like, I go through days where I'm like, I'm going to blow, I'm going to blow, oh, my God, I'm yeah. going to blow. And then, I, and then I go to the spa, and then I'm like, wait, I knew this was avail- available to me all the time, and this is um, before this has already solved things. So, like, why did I take still four days to, to, to get myself here? Like, so it's not, a, it's not a perfect system by any means, but um, so I'm with you. Yeah, no, I mean, all look, I of, of all people, this is the, the one thing, too, when, when sometimes I've, I've had, you know, emails uh, from listeners or, or people on, on Instagram send me messages like, how do I get my mind to stop? Or how, are you, how is it that you're, like, so peaceful all the time? Or how do you, you know, how do you make it seem, like, so, so easy, you know, to have so much stuff going on? And I'm like, are you kidding let me tell you something. It is hard and I'm an asshole to people and, 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 you know, I, I get overwhelmed and, and I get overworked sometimes and I have to stop. Like I'm human, yeah. you know, it just, that's part of what happens. And, and that's why I practice, you know, I'll be the first one to admit it as well. And I think that that's part of, you know, the, the, uh, the mysticism of what social media can sometimes portray in people's lives. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yes. Perfection. You know mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, yes. Oh, life is perfect and everything's fantastic and everything's wonderful. And it's like, well, what's underneath that, you know? And I, and I yes. find it, you know, it's, it's, it, it goes both ways. You know, I, I like to share a lot of, uh, personal insight as far as my life and, and how it relates to my practice. But, but I also am private in, in certain things, you know, it's like, I don't really want to overshare everything, but, Mm -hmm. but you know, there are things when I'm struggling, like I'm happy to talk about it when I'm happy, I'm happy to talk about it. And I think that that's just part of the balance, but I think that people may think, or they, they might look at, at you and be like, here's this like beautiful young woman who's created uh, this business and is thriving and like, you know, you're, you're continuing to expand and bring different, uh, different products in and, and different flavors and cultivating and, and, and making a difference and creating this culture. And it's like, oh, your life must be perfect and, and wonderful, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And you're like, and that is the, that is the human, I don't know what is, you know, that's definitely, uh, that's incorrect. I can tell you with 100% accuracy, I am not perfect. Not even close. Well. And I experience a lot of, I experience all the same emotions I always did. Sadness, anger, happiness, the whole nine. You know? I mean, it because everything's... That's life. The sky. Okay. So wait, I'm going to tell you my quotes because now. Oh yeah. No, I I was about to. Okay. I'm about to go back. Yeah. So the first one, based on what you just said, the first one is the sky is meant to hold all the weather. And I love that quote because yeah, because I think we have this misperception today, especially with social media and all that stuff to always be happy. And that like, if we're not happy, things are bad or wrong. And I absolutely disagree. If anything, this experience has showed me that like anger, jealousy, sadness, um, envy, this is all, these are all emotions that our, you know, bodies are allowed to and supposed to experience. And as long as we allow that to all flow through us, like, I think we can be really satisfied, but this, this constant kind of repression of these quote unquote negative emotions, I think is contributing to a lot of problems out there. So like, and, and my, in myself too, which is why I use this quote, because sometimes when I'm like, I shouldn't be so sad or I shouldn't be this, 
I'll say that to myself, kind of like, hey, the sky was meant to hold all the weather. So what if it's fucking raining right now? The sun will come, you know? Um, and it's okay that it's raining. It should be raining. I'm upset about something. So what? You know? Yeah. All right. So that's the first one. Oof. The next one, the next one is, you guys have heard this one for sure. I did then what I knew how to do. Now that I know better, I do better. That's by our, the great Maya Angelou. And um, I love that one because having, be, you know, being this being my first time in the driver's seat, um, my team follows me and I love my team. However, my investors, and now I have two pretty, you know, um, well-respected private equity groups that are like heavily involved in health aid. That's how we've been able to grow dollars wise, um, required quite a bit of investment. And they've been he there, like they have run aside businesses now for 25 years. So like, you know, I'm one of 20 CEOs to them. And so, I mean, naturally when I, when I make a mistake and I'm kind of like a little bit of a perfectionist, I feel this sense of guilt that I made this mistake, you know, especially to them. Cause I'm like, Oh gosh, I've disappointed them or I did something wrong, you know? Right. Um, but this quote really helps me because, you know, it's no secret. This is my first rodeo. So of course I did what I thought I knew to do. And now that I know better, I'll know, I'll do better. So like, it's, it's a constant kind of like self-compassion thing. That's like, you're exactly where you need to be. You just learned a lesson. It's all good. Keep going. You know, like, Kind of just don't be so mad at yourself for not knowing what what you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, I love that. That's just, you're really dropping all the wisdom bombs today. <laughs> uh, so I, I want to be respectful for, you know, of your time and, and, you know, you're, you're definitely going to be on again soon. I hope, um, I, I want to just kind of ask you just a, a, a couple more questions and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap. But, uh, one of the main things that, that I think is important is to be able to create, um, you know, a community and, and, and that sort of, uh, tribe culture within, within, you know, the health and wellness world. And, and again, as I said, I think that you and your business, you've really done a, a great job at doing that. How, how can, how do you think we can, uh, continue to do that? Just, you know, maybe it's just as women, uh, or men as well, but, but as female entrepreneurs, like wh how do you think we can continue to create more support for each other? Hmm. You know, the, the few things that are coming to mind here are first, we got to start it young. I think so many of those bags I was talking about that I carried around that I'm sure we all do. They started at a very young age, like, and they, um, they came from a negative look when I did something or said something that didn't fit their, you know, model, of, like what should be. Yeah. And we're not talking about like stuff that really should hit your, your radar of what should be like, I mean, we should all give negative looks to people who like rape other people, but we're not talking about stuff like that. We're talking about like dying your hair pink or like something that doesn't really matter. So I think the first thing we can do is stop giving those negative looks, uh, like being very kind of uh, being very articulate and deliberate with, with who we're sending a negative judgment to, especially if it's a little person, you know, like a little girl or a little boy, because yeah like they are just soaking in our messages. So that's number one. And it's kind of a long-term approach, but you know, shorter term, we, we've just got to be there for each other. When you see your friends struggling, uncomfortable, quiet, dark, you know, helping them lean into that instead of pull out of that, like try not to just be like, Oh, the silver lining is, well, at least it's not this, or at least we don't live in freaking you know, the Middle East right now where like things are really bad. Okay. That's one way to look at it. But the other way to look at it is my friend is really suffering right now. I need to hear her. I need to listen to her. I need to let her talk because when we talk, we flow. And when we flow, we kind of get through things. So I think what I would say is just listen, be there, be present and really, really like the, the intention shouldn't be to get them to just smile. The intention should be to help them get through it, which me, which is something different. It might mean you having to sit down with them and be negative and hear negativity 
for a bit until they're ready to let it go. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Thank you. I'm like, we need to just really do this again. And we could just talk about all the life lessons. I think, I think it's some, oh my gosh. some really uh, insightful uh, knowledge that, that we all need to have and, and need to practice. So part of what, uh, uh, why I created this podcast was uh, to create a, a community, to create a forum, to create a place for people to go to when uh, they're needing support and they're needing to feel uh, that we're all radically loved and that people are doing things in the world and we're completely supported by God, source, the universe, baby Krishna, whatever higher power of your understanding is, that we are completely radically loved. The universe works for us and not against us. So the final questions to you are, how do you feel that radical love or how do you feel radically loved? And what do you radically love? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, how do I feel radically loved? Well, I'll just tell you that when I do, when I do take that break and that moment um, to chill out, I always come out of that being like, oh, wow, everything is actually exactly as it should be. So how do I do that? I take a break. I get out in nature. I try to see the whole picture. I don't let this one negative thing paint the whole thing. Because usually if a bad thing happens, well, don't forget about the 99 good things that also happen. You know, so it's like, I'm not trying to say that that one thing doesn't matter, but like, you got to take it in whole. And if you're taking it in whole, that means only 1% is bad. That's not so bad. (laughs) I love that. Um, So that, but I do, I always envision like the trees and the stars and the grass and the sun, like all kind of flowing to help me. And when I'm, when I'm down and out and like, I don't know that that does something for me, but, um, what do I radically love? Um, I love my son and my husband and my family and all the people that support me. I I just, I think it definitely, the love goes to the people for sure that are supporting this dream and supporting me as a person through my journey. I love that. I'm, I'm like, I love, I love here. You know, I always say that, and and I do because you know, when when people talk about what they love, it just really lights them up, and then I think it's just it creates a ripple effect, and it allows us to be able to reflect to uh, it, it, to reflect that not only that that love, but to see the areas in our life where we feel those things. So thank you. Uh, you're amazing. I am so inspired by you and what you created in your story. And and I'm so grateful that you created, uh, the best kombucha in the world. So thank you for doing that. And, um, for, for being here for the people that want more information about you or about health aid, where can they go, uh, to get more information? Yeah. Um, healthaid.com. So H E A L T H dash A D is in dog E.com. Um, or you can follow us on Instagram too at health aid. Okay, great. Um, any wisdom bombs that you wish to drop? Do you have a personal that you share or do you just go straight through the health aid, uh, social media outlets? Oh no, my personal one is at Dinah Trout, but I don't think it's all that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what if people <laughs> really <laughs> enjoyed? What if people have questions? Sure, you know? absolutely. Reach out to me at Dinah Trout, D-A-I-N-A Trout. And I love questions and you'll see I post all about my day there. So um, yeah, feel so we free can actually to see this in action. We can see you the can see it. You can see me in action, the good, bad and everything in between. Oh, Dinah, thank you so much for uh, inspiring women everywhere and men and for being such a strong uh, entrepreneur and lighting the way for all of us who are, have uh, big aspirational dreams to create something. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed talking to you. For everyone listening, I will put all the uh, show notes and links to the Healthy Kombucha and Dinah's personal uh, everything. I'm going to put her social security number, email. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to put all her personal information on there and uh, so you can reach out whenever you like. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I am so excited to continue to do this. Please share this with your friends. Email us, message us on Instagram at Rosie Acosta or on Twitter at Rosie Acosta. Subscribe on iTunes, write a review. 
We love doing this. So please help us continue to keep this podcast going. Thanks for listening.